Are these running backs in trouble? We are going to dive into the data to find out what you should be doing with these running backs heading into week three. But we're starting off with the first player, and it's me, Kyron Williams. And if we're looking at Kyron Williams in full PPR, 14 fantasy points in week one, 15 fantasy points in week two. And so you're going to say to me, Caleb, nothing to worry about here with Kyron Williams. Let's move on. That is not how I'm viewing Kyron Williams because we have seen, we see Cooper Cup go down with injury. We already saw Puka Nakua go down with injury. So now we're looking at a passing attack that is struggling. A lot of injuries across the board. This last week, Kyron Williams went from a 90 one percent snap share which is what he had in week one to a 79 percent snap share in week two now dropping down from 91 to 79 percent feels pretty good because we like our running backs to have anything over 65 to 68 percent snap percentage so we love to see that for Kyron Williams but the thing that I wanted to highlight with Kyron Williams in this Arizona Cardinals game I know the game script got out of hand I know that Arizona Cardinals are absolutely bleeding them dry beating the breaks off of them but he only did have 12 attempts for 25 yards and had one total touchdown he had five targets on four receptions for 20 seven yards so really it was those receptions that he was able to get now he did have three targets three receptions in week one so you're going to say well Caleb I don't feel like I need to be worrying at all about Kyron Williams the part about Kyron Williams that I'm starting to get a little bit more hesitation on is Blake Corm and his overall role in this offense now it's very clear to me that Kyron Williams is the third down pass catching back which is great because he's also getting a ton of work in between the tackles but Blake Corm this last week now he only did have eight snaps in those eight snaps Blake Corm did have eight total touches and the part for me with looking at Blake Corm is if he's getting in the game and he's getting those touches, they're just only going to continue to give him more and more and more as he continues to show that he's able to do it because they did select him in the third round. And so it's not like he's drafted super late. It's not like he's a late round flyer showing potential. They put significant draft capital into Blake Corm. Now, Kyron Williams is the clear number one. So I don't want you absolutely panicking. I think we've seen so many other running backs in worse situations with worse snap shares after week two, but I know there are some worries about, hey, I haven't seen the high end upside of Kyron Williams yet, but we have to feel pretty good about 14 and 15 fantasy points in the first two weeks out of your RB1 or potentially your RB2 if you did a double hero RB build. The second running back that we need to have some talks about us, are they in trouble? Is going to be Travis Etienne for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And week one had a 70% snap share and week two had a 72% snap share. Now it was a little bit better against Cleveland. He did end up with 14 fantasy points instead of 11 fantasy points in week one but he had one more attempt 13 rushes compared to 12 in week one 52 yards and had one total touchdown the kind of big difference for him is he ended up getting one extra target had an extra reception when we're looking at Travis Etienne very similar level performance I mean in full PPR the numbers are going to be skewed just a little bit based on that extra reception but we still need to keep our eye on Tank Bigsby because Tank Bigsby has looked pretty good to start the season and the thing that I want to talk about is how last week Tank Bigsby looked good this week they had Dearness Johnson in in there at that RB2 spot and he got 17 total snaps. Now he didn't get any targets, but he did have five total carries. So the part for me that I want to start to like continue to see is can this Jacksonville Jaguars offense get better? Because we saw how abysmal it was on Sunday. Trevor Lawrence is looking like he's potentially getting to the point of people are starting to call for his job a little bit. He got paid mega money, so they're not going to bench him, but it hasn't looked good for the Jags. And really these next three weeks going up against Buffalo, Houston, and Indy, it's not the worst schedule, but it's also not the best schedule I've ever seen. So Travis CTN is someone that I'm not necessarily thinking he's in trouble, but I do think we need to continue to monitor that situation. Now, when we get to some guys that are fully, fully in trouble, first guy we're going to be talking about is Zeke Elliott for the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys went up against the Saints this week, and the thing that we need to look at with the Dallas Cowboys snap share is the fact that we had Zeke, Rico, and Deuce Vaughn all get some runs. So we had Rico Dotto got 30 snaps, Zeke got 28, and Deuce Vaughn got 10. Now, when we're looking at routes run, Zeke and Rico both had 16, Deuce had five. And then when we're looking at overall carries, Rico had seven, six for Zeke and four for Deuce Vaughn. And I think after seeing this kind of performance from Zeke, after last week, he had a 51% snap share and had 12.9 fantasy football points. I think this continues to remind us that Zeke Elliott is going to be a touchdown or bust type running back. And so you got to know that going in. So if you're putting him in your flex, I think he's probably a flex option at this point. Don't think we can push him up to like the RB2 area, but I think he's 
he's kind of in trouble right now. I think you need to have a little bit better perspective on potentially what you need to be doing with Zeke, whether you're making sure that you have a Rico Dotto or whether you have a Deuce Bomb, but up to this point, it seems like a three kind of bell cow committee, and that's nothing that I want to be a part of. The next running back that's going to be in trouble for 2024 face football is going to be Chase Brown for the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, all offseason, the debate was Chase Brown versus Zach Moss. What is this committee going to look like? Well, Zach Moss got 51 snaps on week two versus the Chiefs. Well, Chase Brown only got 13 snaps. Four carries for Chase Brown, 12 carries for Zach Moss. Now, it hasn't been great for Zach Moss, so I'm not trying to say the sky is absolutely amazing for you if you're a Zach Moss owner because he only had five fantasy points in week two, but he did have 14 in week one. But when we're looking at Chase Brown and this overall work that he's getting, five fantasy points, three fantasy points over the last two weeks. Chase Brown is clearly the two, and he might be a two that's not even being used. And so that's the crazy part for you if you are a Chase Brown owner. Definitely have to be avoiding some Chase Brown as you're kind of looking ahead. I don't know. He's in trouble. Chase Brown is in trouble. Need to figure out what you're doing, whether you can sell high, whether you can sell him off to the Zach Moss owner. I think Chase Brown showed electricity that we like. I'm just a little bit worried about this going forward. And my final player that's in trouble is going to be Zamir White. And I was telling you guys, I don't know why we were looking at Zamir White as a top 24 running back in fantasy football, just because of this amazing situation that, yo, there's only Alexander Madison. And Zamir White's better than that. Four fantasy points in week one, six fantasy points in week two. Only had a 63% snap share, nine attempts, 24 yards, four targets, three receptions for 14 yards, but hasn't gotten a touchdown at all this season. Now you would be like, well, Caleb, that's not really a big worry. If you didn't look at Alexander Madison and see that he had 16 fancy points in week one, because he had six targets, four receptions was the clear receiving back. But then against Baltimore had six fancy points. So it's been very similar to Zamir White, but he's outscored Zamir White essentially the last two weeks. And I just think this is a full on committee. I think Alexander Madison, Madison's getting some of the goal line, getting those reception work, which is going to be a lot more valuable with the Raiders being behind with a quarterback like Gardner Minshew, who likes to check the ball down than a guy like Zamir White. So I definitely think Zamir White's in trouble. I think you need to kind of consider what to do with Zamir White. He's potentially is like trade cut bait. So depending on what you want to do, add Zamir White to one of your guys to try to get an upgrade. That is what I am looking to do. So if you like fantasy football, if you like to discuss who's in trouble, what I should be doing with players, hit that like and subscribe button on the way to 3000 subscribers. Check out these two videos if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.